Hello friends, hello coaches, how are you today? This is your executive life coach Rick Serrano saying hello from Luxembourg, hoping everybody is doing very well. Today I will be talking to you about a study that just came out on Harvard Business Review, uh, published by Daniel Cost, who is a senior editor at HBR. And it is a study uh, that has gathered information from 3 million people in the US and it is confirming what many of you might be feeling and that is that we are working many more hours, that we are working longer and that this pandemic mode is putting a lot of stress in the way we work. So in a word, we are swamped. This is a fruit, the study I'm talking to you about is uh, the, the fruits of the work, the research of professors Rafaela Sadun and Jeffrey Polzer from HBS together with other colleagues. And they, they have now confirmed what we all were feeling. We were all feeling that we are working longer hours because of this pandemic. Well, the study, as I said, it covers information from 3 million people uh, in 16 global cities, many of them in the US, but not all in the US. And that is confirming definitively that the workday has increased. The workday has increased by 8% or something like 48 minutes. So, you know, this is in the first part of the pandemic. Now, seems that uh, the, the tendency will be staying like that. And employees are also showing that they participate in many more meetings, although for shorter times. So we go to more meetings, although the meetings uh, take a little bit uh, sh shorter than in the past. But still there's a lot of work accumulating and a lot of stress, as you know. And now the statistics show also that some 16% of Americans are planning to keep working from home as part of the after, I mean, I mean that after COVID-19, they still plan to be working from home so that they might not be returning to the office. So what is the meaning of this? Basically that virtual interaction is reshaping the organizations, it's reshaping the way we work uh, in, the, in the corporate work, simply because we are behind the screen all the time and this is unlikely to change in the near future. Now, um, the Professor Sadun says, the role of an office, I'm quoting her, the role of an office is to congregate and help people work together. And now the question is, what happens when you cannot physically meet? What happens when, when you're doing everything you know, online? And how do we adjust to these work patterns? That is the, the question. Longer days and more check-ins, that is the result. We're working more hours and we're checking in more times on the computer and on colleagues and on the boss, on our employees. The team uh, compare frequency of time, frequency of email sent is increasing. They, they, the research team compared what was happening eight weeks before the pandemic started and what is happening eight weeks after the lockdowns were imposed. And the result is the following. Employees are sending 5.2% more emails per day. So 5% 5, 5 more emails every single day. But also emails have more recipients uh, to the rate of maybe 3% additional recipients. That is, we're copying more people. Also about 8% uh, more emails are sent after, after business hours. So either or, or before business hours or outside the business hours. And also, you know, they have noticed that analyzing meeting invitations, they detect that people are getting invited to more meetings. Each meeting was about 12 minutes shorter, but still, you know, it's a lot of meetings taking place, a lot of meetings taking place. And the number of people invited to each meeting has rose by 14%. So imagine, you know, it's all these meetings. So just the feeling that you have has been confirmed by Harvard, it is official. The average work day is lasting 8% longer, so meaning, as I said before, 48 minutes. Now, what happens is that it is unlikely that the employees work continuously, of course, during that period of time. But uh, Professor Sadden suspects that what happens is, of course, that we're accommodating from other interruptions. For example, if my kid is crying, you know, I'm going to compensate with that with simply more time and also probably more meetings. Employees uh, are, have started sending more emails after business hours, so the lengthening of the day 
you know, is, is a fact. So if you're feeling this, this is, this is started by Harvard is confirming you. And the point is that we cannot create very distinct boundaries. It's not easy to create these boundaries, but we need to pay attention to this because this is intruding in our, of course, in our private life. Then there's also the question of how are you, you know, um, set up at home, whether you have a large house or a small apartment, whether you share, you know, your office is inside your bedroom or not. So this changes completely thing. But one thing that they are detecting confirmly is that uh, video conferencing is causing what they call the video conference fatigue. Of course, you know, we're sitting in front of the screen all the time, whether it is Zoom or Teams, and you know, this is more tiring than gathering in person. Of course, when you gather in person, it's, it's much nicer because you interact, you talk about other things and so, but in front of the screen, it's like, oh. And also they say, you know, this is very unnatural because you need to be there, like trying to pay attention. I'm paying attention to what, I, what you tell me. And you know, uh, yeah, of course, this is not very natural, right? So they give three, three small pieces of advice. Listen up because this might be useful for you. The first one is try to empathize with your workers' unique circumstances. Managers need to know that people are, you know, struggling to provide their, 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 their work. So they might be needing your support. That's the first one. Second one is they say, focus on the output, not the hours, says Professor Sadler. Don't, don't, don't focus on the time people spend. Focus on what they are doing, what they are materializing. And the third piece of advice is to say, you know, be ready, be ready to expect differences in productivity from some employees and from the others. Not everybody's going to adapt. Some of them will find working from home very good, energizing and productive. Some others will struggle a lot. So be ready to accommodate those, uh, those situations. So these are the three pieces of advice by Professor Segun. Now, I have my own pieces of advice for you. So these are the Rick Serrano uh, advices for these meetings that we have all the time, Zoom, Teams, whatever. So let me tell you, basically I'm gonna tell you seven quick things. First one. Think twice before calling a meeting and think twice before inviting somebody new to a meeting. We don't need meetings just for the sake of meetings. So think twice. That's advice number one. Advice number two. If you're going to organize a meeting, prepare well the points of the agenda beforehand and stick to them strictly. That's point number two. Point number three. Start by connecting your own video. So you got to be there uh, with your video, with your face and ask people to do so as well, so that you sort of connect. But, but warn them in advance, so warn them prior to the meeting, you know, so that people can put on makeup or can shave, you know, let them know this is gonna happen. Number four, no matter what, please start on time, finish on time, value uh, people's time. Start on time, finish on time. Number five, do not allow any distractions to elongate the duration of the meeting because it, this is very simple. We connect and then people start talking about something else, whether social or even a word, but not the topic of the meeting. And of course, the, the meeting, you know, just, just grows, grows in time. The sixth piece of advice is, you know, dress up a little bit. I mean, don't show in a dirty t-shirt or pajamas. I mean, present yourself decently. And my last advice, but my most important piece of advice to you today is if you are organizing meetings online, please, please, if you're going to show a PowerPoint, make sure it is very dynamic, make sure font is big and messages are clear. Don't overload information or Excel tables that, you know, please avoid it. Use vivid colors and images. Don't spend more than 50 seconds in one slide. What I'm saying, yeah, you know, just put the message and pass, change, change. Now you can tell me, Rick, I have a lot of content. I need to speak about this slide for seven minutes. Well, no, no, don't do it. Slice it and dice it, slice it and dice it and break it down into seven slides. And for each of them, you speak one minute. And finally, please do not allow yourself or anybody else to talk a lot for more than seven minutes. If you need to say a lot, use the interview mode, maybe, you know, work with some, with some colleagues and make it like an interview or make it like a, like a talk show, do whatever it takes to make it more fluid. So those are my seven pieces of advice uh, for you. 
uh, to handle meetings in this time of virtual work from home. Now, you know, folks, this is very important because, you know, uh, the pandemic is still here and it's going to be here for a while. We have just surpassed the 31 million cases worldwide, 31 million cases marked worldwide. So this is far from being over. All right. I hope this is useful. Thank you very much. Please share the video if you consider it was useful for you and please subscribe to my channel. And I also invite you to follow me on Instagram. I am on Instagram as Rick Serrano Coach. And also please visit my website, which is www.rickserrano.com, www.rickserranocoaching.com. And I'll see you here for the next video. Thank you very, very much and stay healthy. This has been Rick Serrano from Luxembourg. Take care. Bye-bye.